Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. Jared here with One of the Nation's Rage. This is my twice a month or bi-weekly vlog. Uh, just to give you an update about my life and such. Let you know what's going on in my life. There's a few things that I want to share with you uh, that have happened over the, the past couple of weeks since the last vlog that I did. Um, so where can I start? Well, first of all, I just I want to share this with you. Uh, I went by the DDS, the Georgia Department of Driver Services, yesterday, and uh, I have some plans. I've already shared one video with you about this, but basically, I picked this up. Which, by the way, these are free. You can get them at any DDS formerly known as the DMV, now they call it DDS, Department of Driver Services, whatever. Um, this is the, just the manual for uh, getting your commercial driver's license, class A, B, or C. Um, I shared with you, I guess it was at the end, de uh, the end of December, which by the way, happy February. One of my favorite months. Anyway, uh, I made a video at the end of December, uh, took you to a driving school it's called Georgia Driving Academy. It's in Rockdale County. Basically, they, they have training there for driving a truck. They have a simulator, a truck driving simulator. They have a yard. They have trucks there where you can drive. They've got classroom training. Uh, the whole nine yards, pretty much. Well... It costs, the tuition to go to that school is about $4,000 normally. And while I would love to go to that school, I think it's a great place. Uh, from what I hear, it's got great reviews. Uh, the teachers are good teachers. The ratio um, between student, the ratio student to teacher ratio is what I'm trying to say our teacher to student ratio is good it's very good so that way uh, there's plenty of time for one-on-one -on -one, uh, activities and tutoring or mentoring whatever have you between the teachers and the students but four thousand dollars is a lot of money and I'm on workers comp um, I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about that there's a lot of things that that I shouldn't say in this video about that legally and so I'm not going to talk about that much uh, just but just to let you know yes I, I am still on workers comp uh, for now but anyway this this uh, this is gonna help me pass the test basically I picked this up I'm gonna go ahead and study this book and eventually when I feel that I'm ready I'm going to go and take the written exam, pay for that, take the test, hopefully pass the test. But before I do the the actual field examination or when I'm behind the wheel of an actual rig, I'm going to uh, get hands-on training. Now, obviously I can't afford $4,000 tuition or anything like that. I can't get a loan to go to that school so I've just been thinking about it and really considering company sponsored training where basically you sign up with a company under a contract usually that contract lasts for one year and basically they'll they will bring you to their school and give you the training that you need to become a truck driver and then at that point they will hire you on they'll pay you a certain amount per mile and you will be under contract to work for that company for at least a year to uh, pay off your tuition whatever fees uh, came along with the training I'm thinking about doing that because first of all it'll work for me it'll work better for me uh, the only issue with that is that it comes along with uh, on-the-road 
truck driving or long haul truck driving where basically it's a national thing. You're going to go from coast to coast in the United States driving trucks. You're going to be gone for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time. When you come back home for a break, it's usually just going to be a few days and then you're back out on the road for, for another month, month and a half. Um, so it's a lot of time away from home. And I know this is a huge sacrifice. It's something to not take lightly. It's a big deal. It's a big, uh, it's a big thing to get involved with that takes a huge commitment. And basically, it's something that you can't back out of. If you sign that paper, if you sign that contract, you're in it. It's not something that you want to walk away from at all. Okay, so I've considered all these things. However, at the same time, I think that it'll work best for me in my situation. Um, my wife, you know, she is... She's in school right now. She's going to nursing school to get her LPN. She'll be in nursing school for a year uh, before she can actually get a job as an LPN, uh, licensed practical nurse. So with my situation, and when I say my situation, I mean the, the history that I've had with the injuries and, and such. I don't think I ever shared with you my back injury that I uh, that I received or the injury that occurred in 2011 but basically I worked at a factory I did a job that required a lot of repetitive motion just basically twisting all day long every single day uh, I packed McDonald's frozen hamburger patties into boxes that were shipped off to the McDonald's stores or restaurants and it was basically just one repetitive motion all day and after so long of doing that in a freezer it wore down the disc my L4 disc in my back and it ruptured so I was out of work for that in 2011 I had to have an injection two injections in my back to get my back right um, and then this past June uh, for the same reasons different motions but I was on the job and I was injured due to repetitive motion again from squatting I think mainly what could have caused that is just me overcompensating trying to keep from hurting my back again and overusing my knees and which therefore caused my uh, medial meniscus to tear uh, tear open and it actually caused my joint and my knee to lock up so I couldn't move my knee for a while until I had surgery I couldn't move my knee and uh, so I have a history I have a big history with that basically I, I don't feel good about going back to the job where this injury happened I don't think that it would be good in the long run for me especially since I underwent the surgery that I went through they, they took out most of the cartilage on the inside of my knee on on this side they took out most of the cartilage in there so basically it's it's practically bone on bone um, now they say that the the tips like your femur and your tibia there's a a thin layer of cartilage that's actually on the bones themselves and I still have that and I want to keep that so that's my point I, I, I don't feel comfortable crawling in crawl spaces or uh, carrying huge hundred pound 40 foot ladders around or anything like that which is what I used to do uh, so this this seems like a, a good way for me to go um, I've heard different things I've heard that driving trucks is rough on your knees it's rough on your back and I assume that's true however at the same time I just think that it would be easier to do this than to, to do another job that has repetitive motion like that where I'm lifting extremely heavy things uh, 
constantly or I'm twisting or, you know, I'm, I'm constantly squatting on my knees or anything like that. I think that this is probably the best route for me to take. And that's that. Now, moving on to the next. I know that took a while. Uh, but that's okay because I only make these videos twice a month. So it's alright if it's a long video. You guys can, can handle with that, right? You, you can handle that, right? It's not that big of a deal. I hope not. Hope you enjoy these, these videos that I make. Um, moving on, I didn't make a location video this past weekend, and that's my norm. I usually go out on the weekends and I'll try to make a location video. Try to. Uh, doesn't always happen. It didn't happen this past weekend. And it's just because things have been so hectic around the house. Um, and uh, my my other son Logan comes over on the weekends I watch him I watch Jonah I try to keep them entertained my wife has been so busy with school and so bogged down with that she doesn't have a whole lot of time um, and that's completely understandable you know she's she's doing really good I'm really proud of my wife uh, for how far she's come in this um, and she's excited I'm excited I'm happy for her. I'm happy that she is sticking it out and she's she's going through with a dream that she has to be a nurse, to help people, to uh, to to love others, to be kind to others, to help people feel better, to take care of people. That's her passion and she is going to live that passion. She's she's sacrificing her time and all the effort that she has to do this and I'm so proud of her and that, that's that's like what this is for me um, I've been thinking about doing this for gosh probably 15 years now um, pretty much since I, I got my driver's license I've been thinking about doing this I used to see those commercials on on uh, television way back in the day uh, about truck driving and truck driving school and all that and it, it always inspired me there's just something about it that really excites me and motivates me I love to drive I love to get out and, and travel and I, I just think that it'll be a great fit for me it's something that I feel like I would enjoy now granted that there's going to be things that come along with it that won't be so enjoyable but it's like that with any job really so I'm not going to focus on those things I guess uh, the best way to put it is that I will be cautiously optimistic when I actually go into one of these training programs um, and that's that the next thing I want to say is uh, I wanted to share this with you. It's it's kind of personal information. I wouldn't normally share it with you, but I know that there are other people out there that have workers comp or have been on workers comp. And a couple weeks ago, I, I normally I get a check in the mail every week, every Friday. My benefits check comes in the mail. It's not a lot of money. It's it's just barely enough to get by. It's enough to pay the bills. You know, the rent, the electricity, the water, the insurance, uh, food, gas, stuff like that. It's just enough to get by. Um, well, it was a Friday. I went out to the mailbox, checked the mail like I always do, and my check wasn't there. And that's never happened before. So I was flipping out about that. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know if they had stopped sending checks, which, by the way, they can't do until this is all over, until the doctor uh, releases me or until I go back to work. They can't stop paying me legally. Um, but I didn't know what to expect. And I looked it up online, and basically uh, online all I got was, well, this kind of thing can happen. So it's best to put money to the side, to, to hold on to money, to save money in case this ever happens. Well, the amount of money that, that I make or that I am given on workers' comp is not enough money for me 
to cover my bills and save some. No, it takes the entire paycheck to just to get by. I'm talking about bare minimal essential things. Now granted, I know that I have the internet, but that's pretty much the only thing that I have as far as a luxury um, that's covered through this this income. Everything else is just the bare essentials. The rent, I just I just mentioned all of it. But basically, you can't you can't save money from a workers' comp check if you make what I make. And so I called my lawyer. It it turned out that there was a glitch in their system. Something happened. Somebody made a mistake or something like that. So I, I had to wait an extra week just to get my paycheck. Um, so I was stressed out for quite a while there. My wife, we were both biting our nails. You know, we were we were worried. We were concerned. Well, the check finally came, and so everything's all right now. We went under, but we didn't go under much. I had to do something that I regret doing. Anytime I have to do anything like this, I regret doing it. I had to pawn something of extreme value to myself so that we would have money for things that we needed that week. So I'm actually, I'm trying to get this thing out of pawn now. Um, and it's something that's very dear to me that just happens to be somewhat valuable. Uh, I'll just go ahead and tell you, it's my guitar. I had to pawn my guitar just so we would have the money that we needed to get by that week. It was a... Uh, it was one of those decisions where it's just like, well, I'll get it back eventually. I don't want to do this, but what other choice do I have, pretty much? And so, yeah, there's that. So, I know I said I wanted to make videos of uh, teaching you how to play certain songs on the guitar, but I can't do that until I get my guitar back. Um, what else? Oh yeah, also, uh, I wanted to share with you my the condition of my knee, right? Um, so, a couple weeks ago, I've been in physical therapy since the beginning of December. Um, that's when I went back to physical therapy. Well, a couple weeks ago, remember on the last vlog I was telling you how good my knee was doing. I came down with tendonitis a couple weeks ago, and which is extremely painful. Um, my my joint started popping, and cracking, and creaking. My bones, um, you could hear them. If I made any movement, which my range of motion right now is great. But you could hear my bones creaking if I moved my knee like that. Uh, and anytime I went to physical therapy, uh, the next couple days afterwards were horrible. It was extremely hard for me to get around after physical therapy. It was a struggle. And I got to thinking about it. And I remembered back in October when my doctor gave me a cortisone injection before he gave me the injection my joint was doing the same thing basically what it does is is uh behind my patella right here my kneecap the cartilage that's left they took a lot of the cartilage out on this side of my knee but the cartilage that's left will get inflamed it'll swell up inside the joint which will create all this pressure and as I put weight on my on my knee, it will build up pressure and it'll get so tight inside that small area of the knee joint and it will just release, it will pop really loud, a lot like it did when the initial injury happened. And it's painful. It just it would do that periodically throughout the day, just over and over and over again. It would build up pressure, release, build up pressure, release and it was extremely painful. I got to thinking about it, and I remembered it doing that before I got my first cortisone shot back in October. So I realized that 
the tendonitis uh, and all that could have something to do with the fact that that cortisone shot wore off. So I went to my doctor yesterday and he uh, gave me another cortisone shot, which today my knee, uh, I'm happy to report that my knee feels amazing today. Literally, it feels better than it has since all this even happened. It feels great today, and I'm happy about it. I'm excited about it. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, it took a while for it to start feeling better. After I got the injection, let's say last night, I was in a lot of pain. The pain actually got worse before it got better. I mean, it, the pain multipli multiplied tenfold. Um, they gave me the injection in the front of my knee. I felt more pressure than normal. And last night I could barely walk because it was so painful. But I woke up this morning refreshed and my knee feels great. So I'm happy about that. But anyway, that's, that's a pretty good update, I would say. That's a pretty good update vlog with so a pretty good amount of information in it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I'll catch you guys soon. Remember, I've got uh, the Bible vlog that's going to be coming up uh, pretty soon on my channel. Uh, the Bible vlog for this week, which is actually the remainder of what I had left over from last week. Uh, I noticed that the the Bible vlog that I posted last week doesn't have any views and that's alright I understand that it might take a while for people to actually find it and watch it but I really hope that you guys uh, do watch the Bible vlogs um, I hope you get something out of it I hope it blesses you and so stay tuned for many many more of those like I said I'm gonna try to get out this weekend and make another location video hopefully I can do that, and I'll catch you guys later. I'll catch you in the next bi-weekly vlog. All right, you guys stay blessed, have a nice day, and I'll see you later. Take it easy.